Leilani, how you doing? I'm doing good. That's good. That's good. I want to thank you for being a part of RB3 TV, okay? And coming on, willing to share your story. Um, we don't have much time, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to dive on in, all right? So, some things we want to bring to light. Um, you want to talk about your lifestyle and some of the things you've been through and what you're going through right now and where you want to eventually head in the future. So, right now, you are 19 years old? Yes, 19. Oh, okay. All right. And you... We'll start in the beginning. We'll start in your childhood, um, early childhood. Um, okay. At the age of eight, I became to become, I was like, CPS became in my life because of my people not taking care of us and stuff. Um, my grandpa, he thought that whooping us was okay because he would beat us and stuff. So yeah, um, my mom put my brother Tan through a window and told him it was okay and basically slapped him and stuff and that's when CPS was called. He got mad and we well, actually went outside. The maintenance man asked him what was wrong. He told him that my mom put his hand through a window or whatever, yeah. And then, yeah, I got out of it. CPS, I actually aged out at the age of 18. So I was in CBS up until eight, until eighteen, so for ten years. Um, I was going through a lot growing up, so therefore, uh, I went through abuse from my parents. I had to see a lot of things. My people would tell me a whole lot of things that wasn't right. Like, for example, um, I would go through so much. I would literally like want to save my life. Like, um, I used to cut myself with my arms everywhere. Um, my thighs, I just got to the point where I wanted to shoot on my thighs only because I didn't want people seeing what I was doing. But my grandma, she was like very connected to God and the Holy Spirit, so she would know what was going on. So she would tell me like, I already knew what happened, like, I was just waiting because the Holy Spirit already told me, but I don't want to force you to talk about anything you want to talk about. So she was like, I just wanted you to tell me. So yeah, that happened. Um, I don't remember what age I got raped by my brother because he took my virginity because, you know, like, survival mode or whatever. Um, my oldest brother, Curtis, he took my virginity, um, at the, yeah, I don't remember what age. This is your biological brother? Yeah. Same mother, same father? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a big difference if it was a different mother, but, but like, it just, yeah. it just. All the siblings I have, I have three brothers, Curtis, Michael, and Jeremiah. Curtis was the one who who took my virginity. Um, basically, he, he would like get high and, and drunk with me and like one day I trusted him and I went in the room and he got me so messed up that he took advantage of me. So basically he like tricked me into like thinking it was okay and I got so messed up that I thought it was okay. And then I told him to get off of me, he wouldn't get off of me. And then he would tell me, don't tell anybody or, or I'm gonna do something or something like that. Um, then that's when I didn't tell anybody, and then that's when I told my tia, my aunt, and she basically asked me if I wanted it. Why didn't you tell me a long time ago? I don't understand why she told me that because she was stuff happened to her when she was younger. She was crying, and I was like, Why would you tell me that? Why would I want that? My brother, my own blood brother, my oldest brother, the one I look up to, like he took care of me too. But I mean, raised my brothers, like I raised my my. My brothers are raised my cousins and all that. I took care of kids like all my life too, certainly, yeah. Like, uh, I don't feel obligated, but it just makes me like, me as a person, I don't think it's okay to like, I feel attached to kids and stuff. I think it's okay to leave them like that. Even up until this day, I have homeboys and homegirls who have kids and stuff, and I won't even charge them to take care of their kids or anything because I build a connection with them, I build a bond with them. And it makes me happy to make sure they're okay make sure they're fed and everything so yeah um that all happened and stuff and i'm still struggling right now i really don't have anywhere to stay i stay with my sister um and yeah so because i don't really trust anybody enough to to do any of that because i didn't messed over a whole lot of my life like um yeah my people are there but they're not really there the way they're supposed to be like my grandfather he, he's there, but he's on drugs. He don't want to tell me he's on drugs. And then my uncle, 
he 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 he's helping himself and everything, but he claimed I, I helped him with like getting money and stuff, but because I helped him blame me on his taxes and stuff, because I didn't want him to, because I didn't want him doing it, so I said he can do it for me, whatever. But yeah, my uncle helps me, but he lives at a men's home, a men's home, so he wait until he gets his place so that I can go live with my uncle. My uncle sends me money and everything, but I can't go stay with my uncle at a men's home. Therefore, because I don't want to mess up what he has going on. But yeah, um, it's been a lot. I used to, when I was younger, I used to, um, yeah, my uncle, my, my, my both my blood uncles, they were affiliated and stuff. Um, my uncle Cletus, he was a crib, and then my uncle Marcus, he was a blood. They were blood brothers, they were opposites. But my uncle Cleet, when he was mad one time, because I would I would mess with his home voice, um, and he would yeah. tell me, they're only trying to get with you to get to me. He told me one time, literally, like, he was so bad on drugs, and he didn't even care. He said, you can go kill yourself, and I wouldn't even care. Like, I don't remember exact words, because it was so traumatizing, that it messed my head up. And then my grandma said she hated me that little week, but like, that's why I used to go back when I was little, because, you know, I used to like and trap. Like, How old were you when you were messing with your uncle's friend? Um, I don't even remember. Like, a lot of stuff in my mind, it just forced to put on survivor mode, because mm -hmm. it was so traumatizing. But I think I was, uh, I think 15 or 16, okay. or if I was... For, I was under 15, like probably like 12, 12, 14 or 13 or 12. Okay, but and how old were these guys? They were like older, they were perverts. Okay. Yeah, they were like 30 and 40. And they were trying to, they have, mom was telling me the whole entire time, they have, they have diseases and stuff and they're going to try to get you in a room and try to rape you and stuff. And to this, to this day, this dude, like, I used to be out in Dickinson and stuff, and he saw me one time in my, well, I was, like, out there, and then he tried to talk to me, but I had somebody I know from, I don't really know her, but I saw her at the um, motel, I never want to stay, so she was, like, telling me, like, I told her what happened with this dude, and she was, like, and she basically made me turn around, and she was, like, yeah, that's, told him, that's my daughter, leave her alone. Cause he noticed me from just the back of my hair and everything. And he was like, she was like, leave her alone. That's my daughter. And he kept asking, who was that? Who was that? And she was like, it's my daughter. <laughs> but yeah. Um, high school. Did you graduate high school? No, I didn't graduate high school. How far did you get? 17. 17? 17 years old? Yeah. So you were what? By 11th grade? Well, I was, yeah, 11th grade. I was finna go to 12th grade. Okay. What made you drop out of school? Uh, cause CPS and stuff, and I was running from CPS. I was running from the FBI. I went off my arrest and everything and all that, yeah. How you get a warrant from the FBI? How I get a warrant from the FBI? Okay, um, how did I get a warrant from the FBI? So basically... When I was, I don't even want to talk about this. Um, if you don't want to talk about it, yeah, yeah. I really don't want to okay. talk okay. about it. Okay, all right, that's yeah. cool. All right, um, so, how are you surviving now? Off my sister. Off I, sister. Tr I trust my sister. Um, she's not my blood sister, but she's, because I don't have any blood sisters yet. Because I only have three brothers, Curtis, Michael, and Jeremiah. So Jer she's a close friend? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is she more than a sister? Are y'all entangled? Or? <laughs> she, she's more than a sister. She's more than a sister. She's like a sister, a best friend, and a girlfriend. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I got a better understanding. Mm, yeah. Okay. Because sis is in here with us right now. She's yeah, giving yeah. eyes like, yeah, like it's going to be a problem. Yeah, that's my girlfriend. Yeah. Don't fuck with her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's my girlfriend. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was hot. it was steam coming out of here, so I'm like, yeah. okay, um, I gotta get some some clarification on it. <laughs> All right, so mm -hmm. that's your everything. So she pretty much yeah. looks out for you. Yeah. All right, so she lives the lifestyle. Do you live the lifestyle as well? I I don't 
want to live there. She she understands and she she accepts me for who I am and everything. She even tells me she don't want me doing things I'm doing, she'll do it. But I don't feel right me as a person letting her do everything and not trying to do it. Because I'm I'm changing and I want to give my life to God, follow the Bible and everything. I've been going to church and everything. And I would like her to go with me. And she's gone with me tomorrow, actually. That's so, what's up. That's what's yeah. up. You talk about God a lot, too. Yeah, I noticed that. God with a passion. That's Makes good. Me happy. That's yeah. good. Do you have a favorite Bible verse or anything? Mm, if God can be for us, who can be against us? If okay. God's with you, I feel like if you know that God is with you and you know that he's in your heart and things, like, and you trust him with your, with your full and everything, like, also when I pray a lot, because um, you, you can pray, but you have to believe it and trust that God's going to do it. Because it's all in your faith. God answers your prayers based off your faith. And based off what you believe and if you trust him. Mm. Like, so that's why I began to do it too because of God. And I've been fighting my flesh. My flesh is basically um, your your body, like mm -hmm. your, your physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I have to fight a lot of Temptation. Desire. Yeah, desire. God. Yeah. God rewards me for that because he knows I'm trying. He knows that I'm, I'm going to him and I'm not steering him or anything wrong. And I'm actually talking to people about God. Um, and if they don't want to, they don't want to hear it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is like, I think it's called blasphemy. Yeah, blasphemy is like denying the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if God tells you to say something and you don't say, that's when you go to hell. That's the one, the one sin you cannot be forgiven of. So some people are gonna get mad at me for asking you this, but I don't care. Um, you're trying to change your life, correct? Mm -hmm. And you're getting into the Word. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's okay? <coughs> For you to have a girlfriend? I don't think it's okay, but God should accept us for who we are. And also, too, I still do the things I do. Is like, sometimes I might do prostitute, but you have to be talking about, like, like money. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. But um, I'm changing. It's not always going to be like that forever. I'm, I want to stop prostitute because I'm traumatized and stuff. Yes. My brother and then people and then fuck niggas. All I ever fuck was all my life just fuck niggas, mm -hmm. cause that's yeah. But you, um, I, it's so much that I want to talk to you about, but we're running out of time, um, so I'm kind of jumping around. Your brother, I I want to say this. So I ask you when I ask you these questions, I'm not judging you, okay? okay. Um. I know, I feel that you definitely want to do right, or go in the right direction. And uh, nobody's going to change overnight, okay? Nobody. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. So I'm definitely not, I don't want you thinking I'm judging you when I ask you these questions. It's just, that's what they I persecuted do. you, you just want to persecute me too. Okay, I'm not going to persecute you, okay? No, no, I'm just saying, people online, they I don't, don't, I don't Oh, care. they talk shit about me, yeah. about y'all. I don't, don't care. Y'all hey. don't see my lifestyle, I don't know where I live, y'all know what I go through to, to be doing the things I do. That's right. Like, like, just, Everybody has a story. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, There's no past, not who I am still. Right. As far as your brother's concerned, the one that did, Curtis, you know, yeah. touch you or whatever, uh, yeah. take advantage of you, where is he? Um, I don't, he's just on the streets. He's really messed up. I forgive mm -hmm. him and everything. I, I have no hatred towards him, but I would, I really want to see my brother. I want to see him and I would give him a hug and tell him it's okay. He's messed up on drugs. Talking about he sold his soul to the devil. He's, he's just, he's stuck in this world. That's major. Yeah. For you hurts. to forgive him for that. That's yeah. major. I can't God, imagine. God forgave me so I can forgive him. Yeah. That's what's up, God man. God died on the cross for me and all the things he did. I mean, Jesus died on the cross for me. He did all the things he did for me. That's, the, that's why I always forgive people because I remember what Jesus did for me. If he can do that... Why can't I forgive somebody? I'm not gonna let that grudge and that, that that things hurt me for what? That's how the enemy gets in your head. He uses your trauma and the things to, to come against you to get towards you. And I'm not gonna let him get in my head. That's why. And I already know God has given me the the power to to, to take out to to possess. Like when demons are possessing you, I can take out evil spirits. Done to my sister. Like. That's why the enemy attacked me so much. He wants me to kill myself because he knows how, how powerful I am. If I feel free from the insecurity, it's like, 
I'm going to walk with God and I'm going to walk with God. That's why I didn't even attack him since I was a child because it's like he knows how powerful I am. And he knows the attack on my life is so serious because he knows if I fully get free from insecurity of caring about this world, it will be over. I'm going to ask you this question um, because I know the viewers are going to have their own opinion. Mm -hmm. Since we started this interview, you haven't stopped moving one time. Is that because of drug use or is it because you're nervous or what? Or have, are you on drugs or do you do? I smoke, I smoke cigarettes and mm -hmm. um, I vape mm -hmm. and I don't want to drink alcohol because um, I'm trying to break generational curses. All my people, they have been um, actually alcohol. Yeah. And I'm breaking generational curses. Okay. And the things that make me sin, I know what makes me sin, I don't do it. So not hard. You're not on any hard drugs. No. Okay. I so. do this because like it's just like a a fidget thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can stop if I wanted to. See. I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can stop if I wanted to. Oh. Yeah, I'm just. Okay. Yeah. So look, we we run out of time. Okay. Uh, we gonna we gonna definitely link up again. I want you to speak on your self inflicting wounds because uh, that's very important. I think that's the most important thing right now mm -hmm. because. I know it's other people that are going through that same deal that you're going through. Right now, you have something on your thighs. Yeah, I just I just did this because my boyfriend, um, well, my ex-boyfriend actually, I forgive him and everything. Do you mind standing up and yeah, um, just stand in front of the camera, just raise it, okay? See, yeah, I just did this because of him, but I realized like. How did you do that? What a knife. <laughs> We're gonna stop, anyways. Yeah, I did it with a knife. And why? Because I was so hurt the way he treated me. Because he told me, I hate you. He said, You're the reason why I hate I hate females. How am I the reason why you hate females when I was outside with you, sleeping with you, dude? Like, You're sleeping with him outside. Sleeping with him outside, doing everything for him. Like, I was showing him the world and everything. Like, I was, I was giving him everything he wanted. I, I literally was okay, willing to leave, leave my sister for him. I told my sister, like um, my girlfriend, that that um, she was telling me, why are you outside? I was like, because I love him. That's my boyfriend. I was so excited and shit. He asked me to marry him. He put on my fucking hand like that. So, okay. So, we, we're running out of time. Um, yours, we're going we're gonna to do a, a to be continued on yours, okay? Okay. Um, before I end this interview, though, First of all, that's very disturbing, all right? How often do you cause self-inflicting pain on yourself? Um, I haven't did it since the last time he hit me. That was like a few days ago. I haven't did it since then, but I still have the urge to. But every time I have the urge to, I have to think about God. Cause I know. So for any young lady that's going through what you're going through right now, that's called a self-inflicting wound. Anybody. Um, what words of encouragement do you have? Or what can you say to say, hey, you know, this is that's not the way. Uh, yeah. What I would like to say, anybody who goes through that or feels any type of way, I'd like to say that don't let the things that, that traumatize you in your head and allow them to get to you. You don't have to put your faith in God. But just remember, what will my family, even if you don't have anybody, don't be selfish and take yourself out because you're in this world for a reason. I'm going to say it, the enemy's only attacking you for a reason because he knows how powerful you are. He knows that, that if he can get to your head and he knows nobody else can take you out because you won't allow them to or whatever, just please don't do it. Like, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Not taking your own life. If you're gonna take it on somebody, please take it on somebody else. Don't do it to yourself. You're too beautiful. Okay. You're too handsome. You're All too right. So look, those words of encouragement that you sent to them, I want you to use those same words for yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. Also, um, are you currently looking for work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, would you like to shout out your socials or anything? Um, yeah, my my social media, my Instagram is T O O dot R A R E T O S P A R E all lowercase. Okay. Do you have a cash app? 
Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Your girlfriend have a cash app? Yeah. Okay. What's your girlfriend's cash app? Um, Spicy D22. All right. Spicy D22. All right. So I will attach that cash app on your video. Mm -hmm. And it, she gonna give you your money? <laughs> yeah, she okay. will. All right, she okay. All right. Like She's in here right now, so. Yeah, yeah, she ain't gonna fuck me like that. All right. All right. Well, Lady Lonnie, I want to thank you for being a part of RB3 TV. It's been a pleasure, and I can't wait to do it again, okay? All right. Have a good one, man. We out.